<clears throat> hey everybody! Had a little snafu this morning, couldn't get the iPad working. So we got backup iPhone. There we are. So we're going to start in just a minute. Uh, hello Ross. We got Susan Sabo, Peter Kim, Gibby, Josh, <clears throat> Coeur d'Alene Sarah, Aloha, Lisa Barnes from Toronto, hello Lisa, <clears throat> Fort Yotterdale, <laughs> I like that, I've never heard that before, <clears throat> got Montana, Canada, Melissa and, Melissa and Jillian, even, even Matt Morrow. <clears throat> Played golf on the whole Bill Gates got married on. Peter Kim, yep. Bill Gates did get married right here where we're staying. So good morning, everybody. <clears throat> uh, we're shooting this live from Lanai. Kimmy and I are here for five weeks uh, on this beautiful, our favorite island, uh, mastering the art of working from wherever you want in the world. And we've got a couple of retreats going on here. I think three different groups coming over, uh, one couple coming over for five days. <clears throat> We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to master the art of running businesses from Lanai, something that we're going to continue to practice. I think we're coming back in March for another month. This morning, Kimmy is, <clears throat> she's practicing her triathlon effort. She's got her fancy $4,000 bike. She's got a bike coach coming over from Oahu. <clears throat> she's going to teach her how to ride her bike like 100 miles. And I am going to the driving range. So, um... Let's see, a couple of announcements. Next Wednesday, um, Hero Call, Jordan Kemper. You don't want to miss him, 25, 26 years old. He spoke at GoPro. He's got like 20,000 people in a group in USANA. <clears throat> um, so that's going to be an awesome Hero Call. Right now, we got Mastermind going on in Orlando, which some of you may be at or be maybe live streaming. Eric Worre's just coming off a major run in Europe. He had 7,000 people in Istanbul after GoPro in Vegas. How about that? That's 7,000 generic people. That's not just from one company. So a lot of awesome things going on in network marketing. And what I wanted to talk to you all about uh, this morning is the Bliss Business uh, way of turning your cold market into your warm market and dealing with people to romance them into the business. So I'm just gonna step through some steps that I like to teach people about this process. And at the end, if you have some questions that you wanna chat in, I'll uh, see if I can handle those questions for you. <clears throat> so the first step in this process, this bliss business curiosity approach to enrolling people uh, is to just connect with people. And if you think about the fundamental art of what we're doing here in this business is, you know, we are word of mouth marketing. So if we're not talking to people, if we're not sharing with people, if we're not recommending to people about our products and our opportunity, then we're not marketing and we're not spreading the word. And we have this awesome power of geometric progressions that allow us to grow quantumly but we've got to like kickstart the thing and sometimes we have to keep kickstarting it by having those conversations. So the first step in this process is just to connect with people. And so if you talk to anybody that's built an empire in network marketing, what they'll tell you is they develop the habit as fast as possible of connecting with people on a daily basis. Now some of those people might be people you know. So you know, the art of network marketing is to start, uh, first, of course, start with your network. Most of us know two or 300 people or two or 300 people know us. And so, you know, obviously one of the first processes is get that list of people together and go about contacting them, just connecting with them. So when you connect with people you already know, 
and your agenda is to offer them your products or business opportunity, here's the first step in connection that Bliss Business philosophically recommends that you may not find in traditional network marketing training. And that step is, that philosophy is, when you connect with people that you already know, the first thing that you want to tell them is why you are connecting with them. So if you're contacting somebody that maybe you went to high school or college with or somebody you worked with 10 years ago and you haven't talked to them in 10 years, you know, what traditional training might teach you is, you know, connect with them, ask them how their family is, you know, what's going on, and, you know, chit-chat away, whether it's on Facebook or, or live. And then at some point, guess what you, you know, whip out of your coat pocket or out of your purse is, oh, by the way, do you keep your income options open? And here's the problem with that kind of approach. Everything that you did to build rapport or chit-chat with that person up until the time that you pulled your business opportunity or your products out of your purse gets invalidated when you do it because what they realize is that's why you connected with them. You connected with them because you're trying to sell them something or enroll them in something. And if you're contacting people you already know, that is what you're doing is at least offer them the opportunity to take a look. So if you wanna get behind this movement of restoring the integrity and the reputation of network marketing, what you want to do is just be straight with people. I mean, if you had somebody that you went to high school or college with that you hadn't talked to for 10 years, would you want them to call you up and ask about your kids and ask about the job and maybe chit chat with you over three or four different sessions and then all of a sudden, oh, by the way, uh, let me tell you about this great, in- would you want, how would that feel to you? Would, it, would you feel like you were deceived? Would you feel like you were set up? Would you feel like you were used? Versus, How would it feel if somebody just called you up and said, you know, hey, Mary, this is Richard. You know, we went to high school together. We went to college together. I worked with you at whatever place. You know, I know I haven't talked to you in 10 years. Here's why I'm calling you. And just be straight with them right out of the box. You know what? People appreciate that transparency. And if you'll remember the context of all of this in Uh, prospecting and enrollment. If you'll remember the context of what we're asking people to do is just take a look. Boy, if there's one mantra you want to memorize, you want to put this in big words over your desk, over your phone, over your mirror, it's that what we're asking people to do is just take a look. And as soon as you drop into that place where what you're asking people to do is buy your products or become a distributor in your company, you really are fighting then an uphill battle because people don't have enough information to buy our products. They don't have enough information to become a distributor in our company and those presentations take quite a bit of time usually. So you're just so much better off if you just keep the perspective in mind of what you're up to is just asking people to take a look. So when you contact all your warm market, all those people that are on your list that uh, are warm market people, Our recommendation from Bliss Business is be straight with them, be right out of the box, tell them right up front, this is what I'm doing. If you're talking to them about the product, just tell them what the product is, tell them your story about what the product did for you, and ask them if they'd be willing to watch a two or three minute video. Just lose the chit chat and get straight to the point. Now let's talk about connecting with people you don't know. This is the art that network marketing professionals have developed. They got, they've developed the art of every day, in every way, wherever they go, whatever they're doing, just living life, following their bliss, if you will. They just get in the habit of connecting with people. And what does a connection look like? Well, you know, it's obviously a conversation. Could happen digitally. Could happen with, you know, a little chit-chat on Facebook or Instagram or, you know, something like that. And, of course, it can happen live. And so how does a connection start? Well, you might ask by somebody, asking somebody what their name is. You know, that's like, that's like super simple and always creates a connection. Now, obviously, you only ask that if you don't know what their name is. So, but maybe you ask them, you know, where they're from or, you know, what's going on with them right now. Or, you know, maybe you make some kind of comment about something they're doing, which might happen, you know, online. So you're commenting on Facebook or maybe you're sending them a private message. And in this case, you are developing rapport. 
And here's the difference between people that are in your warm market and people that are in your cold market. People that are in your warm market know you. They may not like you necessarily, but they know you. And so you're, you're not like a serial killer to them or a stalker or a criminal or something like that. They're going to at least listen to you. People you don't know, you don't have any relationship with at all, you just can't come out of the box and say, oh, by the way, do you keep your income options open? Which, oh, by the way, is one of my least favorite questions. So you got to develop some relationship. you got to develop some rapport with people. And so here's the most important uh, piece of the connection. If you're going to follow the Bliss Business philosophy and help restore the reputation of the network marketing profession, when you're connecting with people you don't know, you got to make that connection neutral. you got to make that connection. It's perfectly okay if the conversation never gets to your product or business. In other words, you don't want to make a connection and what you're looking for in the connection is the first opportunity to drop a product question or an opportunity question on this person. Why? You don't have enough relationship and rapport to do that yet. And very often, in the limited time you have to connect with people, you're not going to get that opportunity. So, you know, if you're like sitting with somebody on a park bench and, you know, you start talking to them and maybe then they got to go. So you only got two or three minutes. You got to be a, you got to be willing to let people go. You got to be willing to just live life and let people kind of move through your life, connect with as many of them as you can and just let that go wherever it goes. So connection is first. Second is curiosity. Curiosity is probably the best word. You know, Einstein said if he, he, he wasn't anything else other than just insanely curious. He wasn't a genius. He was just curious. So I want you to just think about being incredibly curious about everyone you meet. So if you're curious about somebody and you're talking to them or you're digitally talking to them, what's the form of the conversation going to be? Right? It's going to be questions. You're not going to be talking. You're going to be telling everybody about your product or your company or network marketing or, you know, your stories or your opinions. You're going to be asking them questions if you're curious. So, you know, the first thing people ask when I say, you know, be curious and ask people questions, they're going to want, you want to know what kind of questions do I ask people? So there's all kinds of training historically teaching us as network marketers what kind of questions to ask people. You can ask people, you know, where they live and how long they've lived there. What do they do for a living and how long they've done that? And what do they do in their spare time? And, you know, do they keep their income options open? And, uh, you know, all kinds of those crazy things. Well, instead of you memorizing any of those questions, Here's how I would like to guide you and teach you how to learn what questions to ask if you're just purely curious. And the way to learn what questions to ask are trust yourself. Trust yourself in your intuition and ask whatever questions come to mind based on curiosity. And notice the distinction that'll happen when you start practicing this. Notice how quickly you will move to wanting to ask them a question, the answer to which sets you up to knock them out of the park. You know, some kind of question about, you know, what do you hate worst about your job? Or what kind of retirement options do you have with your job? So why would you ask them that question? Because you're curious? Or because you're just hoping that they're going to say, well, the retirement options in my job suck. So then you can bounce back with, well, if I could show you how, that kind of prospecting, folks, does not endear people to us. Most importantly, if you don't connect with people, if you don't get people to the invite stage the first time, and you don't treat them along this philosophical line. You don't treat them beautifully with honor. You don't treat them in a porous manner, transparent manner, where it's perfectly okay with you if the conversation never gets to your product or business. If you don't treat them that way, then when they leave the conversation with you, they just have that icky feeling. They feel like they've been you know, attempted to be sold. They feel manipulated. They feel a little bit deceived. And here's the real downside of that. That doesn't make them a great prospect 
for the next time you talk to them. And let's just say you connect with a couple of people a day, five or six days a week. You know, that's 700 people a year. Most of them are not going to look. But if you treat people right, if you follow this philosophy, if you let people go, if you honor people's no, the best prospect list you're going to have a year from now is everyone who said no. Everyone who you never even got to the point where they could say no. If you kept, you know, if you had an opportunity to get their contact information, why? Because they might have a sense of what you do, they have a sense of the conversation, and they like talking to you. So be curious and ask any question that comes to mind that is based in curiosity and avoid like the plague any question that would set them up for you to sell them. And third, third step. So first is connect. Second is be curious. Third is be present. Now, most of the time I talk about being present as listening. But I want to talk about being present as something more than how most people just hear listening. I want to talk about being present as when you're talking to me, I am totally 100% present to you. I'm not thinking about something else. I don't have this agenda that I'm spinning like in my head, like mapping out the conversation. Okay, if I can ask him this, I can get him to say this, then I can tell him about this or ask him about this. All of that conversation in your head distracts you from being present. So when you're asking people questions and you're coming from curiosity, what I'm asking you to do is practice the art of being present. And what being present looks and sounds like is... You're listening to what people say. You're actually listening to what they don't say. You're actually listening to what they might like to say. You're listening to who they're being. You're listening to the soul, to the emotions, to everything that's going on for them. And what you're not listening to is you. Your chatter, your judgments, your strategy, your opinions in your head while they're talking. That's what being present looks like, is what it feels like to the other person, is you are 100% focused on them, and you're not distracted by something else, even your own thoughts. That's what it looks like to be present. You are totally 100% listening to people. Step four in this process is be patient. So first, you're connecting with people. Second, you're being uh, curious. Third, you're being present. Fourth, you're being patient. Patience is really, really important in developing this relationship. Patience allows that you let people go. Patience allows that if the conversation doesn't get there, you don't force it. Uh, Probably the best way I can express uh, what it feels like to be patient is be patient. Let them invite you to invite them. Now, I want to promise you something. I'm going to make you a solemn promise. If you'll connect with people, if you'll be uh, curious about people, if you'll be totally present to the people, and you'll be patient with people, I'll make you a solemn promise. I got almost 40 years of experience to prove this. People will tell you. They'll tell you what their greatest pain is. They'll tell you what their greatest passion is. They'll tell you what is missing in their life. They'll tell you what they want more of in their life. They'll serve themselves up to you on a silver platter if you're patient. And if you let them invite you to invite them to take a look, then it's a natural progression of the conversation. And they feel good about it. It's like they're buying instead of you selling. So... Patience is huge in this process. So the next step is the invite. And the invite is as simple as something like this. If somebody tells you after maybe three or four conversations or four or five or 10 or 15 minutes in one conversation, you know, they tell you something like, you know, the biggest challenge I have in my life is I got three kids. They all want to go to these great colleges. They don't have perfect grades. 
you know, I'm looking at, you know, $75,000 a year, going to totally deplete our retirement account. And besides that, my mom and dad are getting older and it looks like I might need to take, I don't know, whatever they tell you. Or they tell you that the most important thing to their life in their life is kite surfing. And they just want to go all the exotic places all over the world and go kite surfing. That's somebody serving themselves up naturally to you and inviting you to invite them. So what does the invite look like? It looks like something like this. Well, you know what, Mary? I know exactly how you can do that. Or I might have a way that's a fit for you to handle that college education. Or I know exactly how you could kite surf all over the world and make as much money as you make now. And so you follow your bliss. I know how you, how that, how you can do that. Whatever you say about what they said, just be clear and be confident perhaps not arrogant, but clear and confident, and tell them you know how they can solve their problem, followed immediately by, would that interest you enough to take a look? Now, here's why that works. If you go through this process and you let people buy instead of you selling, then what you're offering them is the solution to one of the most important challenges they have in their life. That's what you're offering them over here. And on the other side, what are you asking in return? All you're asking them to do is take a look. You're not asking them to buy the product. You're not asking them to become a distributor. You're just asking people to take a look. And what does the look, look, look like? Well, as we all know, it better look like a tool. It better not be you telling everything about your great products and your great company. It better sound like, hey, I got a three-minute video or I got this little four-year career book or, you know, I got something for you to look at to learn about our products or learn about our opportunity. And any very successful networker will tell you that if you go through this process and you just ask people to look at a tool, if what you're offering them in return is something that's personal to them, something they're passionate about, they'll look at your tool. And so then it's just a sorting process, folks. You know, we don't, The last thing you want if you're going to build an empire is people on your team that don't really want to be on your team. People on your team that aren't sold on network marketing. People on your team that you know, aren't, you know, they don't have a crystal clear passion that they're pursuing. And so what do you spend most of your time doing as a leader? You spend most of your time motivating them and putting Humpty Dumpty back together again and putting them back in the business again. So be cautious about selling people before they're ready to be sold. Selling people before they're ready to buy. The people you want in your organization are the people that are ready. And, you know, here's, here's the truth about prospects. There are not very many prospects that you and I have that don't want the benefits of the products we sell. So if we sell products that save people money, who doesn't want to save money? If we sell products that, you know, make people look more beautiful, who doesn't want to look more beautiful? If we sell products that help people lose weight, who doesn't want to lose weight that's overweight? If, if we sell products that just make people more vital and live longer, who doesn't want that? Everybody wants what we're selling in most cases. So when people say no to our products, they're not saying no to the benefits of our products. They're probably not even saying no to our products because network marketing products are usually far better than other companies' products. What are they saying no to? I'll tell you what they're saying no to. The same reason they say no to the income opportunity. It's not because they don't want more money. Who doesn't want more money? What they're saying no to is based on what's going on in my life right now, in the moment that you drop this invite on me. My kids, my job, my parents, my personal passions, my challenges, my finances, I just don't have the bandwidth to go through the process of watching your video, answering all the questions, or asking the questions, getting the answers, going through all the due diligence, and going through that buying process. People are experienced enough to know that if they say yes to starting the process of evaluating a product or an opportunity, they're going to spend some time in that process. And the process is not fun for them. It's like going to buy a car, you know? Does that sound like fun? It's not fun for people. They know there's just a lot of stress and a lot going on there. So people are busy today. People are stressed out today. In the moment that we invite them, they don't always feel like they have the bandwidth 
to do the process justice. And that's why they say no. Not because they don't want our products and not because they don't want uh, uh, more income. Now, oftentimes people, once they figure out, or once we tell them, hopefully we tell them straight up, that we're network marketing, they'll say no to network marketing. Why? Because 70 years worth of prospecting them wrong. 70 years worth of misconceptions about how we do business and what our business model is all about. And that's where the four-year career comes in. Great tool to give people to move them through that process. So the invite is simply, hey, I think I might be able to solve your problem. Would that interest you enough to take a look? Here's a tool to take a look. And then what's the last step in the process? It's what most people call follow-up. And I want to give you a twist on that. Instead of seeing follow-up as a process of continuing to call people back, did you watch the video? Did you try the products? Did you go to the website? Did you, are you going to come to the meeting this week since you didn't come last week? Are you ready to come to a presentation this week? Instead of all of that kind of follow-up, what I want to suggest that you do is see everybody in your contact list that's in the maybe zone. So you have the yeses. You have the no's, actually both of those are really valuable, but there's, if you talk to 100 people, there might be only five or 10 that are in the yes column. There's also probably only gonna be five or 10 that are in the no column. Where's everybody else? They're the maybes. And the maybes are what'll suck the life out of you. So part of your job is to move all the maybes to either a yes or a no. No's are more valuable psychologically to you than a maybe. Because a no, you don't run that racket in your head about, oh, they're going to show up this week, or I'm going to get them to a presentation this week. That just sucks energy out of you. That's kind of puts you right in the hope mode. I hope they're going to do something this week or this month. You need total clarity. You need people in yeses. You need people in noes. So what I want to suggest that you do in the follow-up stage is just think about everybody that's, that you've talked to Think about how you can serve them. When you follow up with them, think about how you can serve them, not how you can harass them. Think about what do they do for a living? What what are some of the things you learned about them in the conversation? And so one of the ways that I do this is I read a lot. I read a lot of blogs. I, I, I read a lot of social media stuff. I read a lot of website stuff. I read a lot of emails. I read magazines. I read newspapers. And every time I'm reading anything... The primary filter that I'm reading through is how could this article or this blog or this piece of information serve somebody that's in my network, somebody that I'm following up on, somebody that maybe I've invited to look at my business, or just somebody that's a friend? How can I serve them? If you'll think about how to serve people, Instead of following up to get them to do something they're obviously not motivated yet to do, you'll find that people in in your pipeline are much more happy to talk to you and much more ready to serve you. And here's the last piece of this program. And that's what do you do when people say no? So what do most people for the last 70 years in network marketing do when a prospect says no? I mean, they say definitively, no, I don't want anything to do with this. Now that I know it's network marketing, no, no, I don't have any time. I don't have any money. I don't want to sell. I don't like these products. No, 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 no. What do most people do in network marketing? What they do is argue with people. So somebody says, I don't have time. And the the distributor will say, Uh, Yes, you do. If you sleep eight hours a day and work eight hours a day, you got 72 hours a week free time. You got all kinds of time. You're wrong. Somebody says, I don't have any money. Well, sure you do. If you got thrown in jail tomorrow and the bail was, you know, $5,000, who's the the first person you call? Where'd you get the money? Well, wherever you get that money, that's where we're going to get the money to start the business. So what we have been doing for 70 years is taking people's personal opinions, taking people's decisions about their life. Somebody decides about their life. I don't want to do your business. I don't want to buy your product. I don't want to be a network marketer. That's a personal decision that people are making after being given whatever information you gave them. And what we've done for 70 years is say, you know what? I know more about what's good for you and your life than you do. 
I may have only known you for 30 seconds, but because I'm a network marketer and because I'm in the greatest network marketing company ever and we sell products that'll cure anything, I know what's best for you. So whatever you think about your life, you're wrong, I'm right, and we argue with them. So we could talk to 10 people a day and if what we do with the people who say no is dishonor them by arrogantly telling them they're wrong and we're right, the challenge is we can't talk to that person a year from now. We can't recycle them. We can't check back with them in two or three months and say, hey, has anything changed? It's Richard. I just want to check in with you, let you know what's going on with that business. Maybe you thought of somebody that's a good fit for me or maybe something changing. You can't do that if you've offended and dishonored people by arguing with them and making them wrong, or you've deceived them, they've asked you something like, is, you know, is this like Amway? And you said, oh no, not anything at all like Amway. Well, they don't mean the corporate banner of Amway. They mean, if they ask you if it's like Amway, is it network marketing? And so if we say anything other than yes, it is, then we're deceptive. So if you don't deceive people and you honor people, here's how you honor people that say no. Somebody tells you no, like definitively no, the first thing you want to say to them is, Mary, I get it. I get it. I hear you. I get it. I accept your no. And you know what? I won't harass you about it. If the first response they get from you is that, watch their whole physiology change. They will relax. They may even laugh a little bit. Now what's happened is they're no longer on defense and they're comfortable being around you. And you can just say something like, you know, obviously I'm really excited about this. Would you mind if, you know, every two or three months I just checked in with you, let you know how I'm doing. Maybe you would have thought of somebody that might want to try my products or take a look at the income opportunity. And if you've given people their no, if you've honored them and supported them, they'll give you that follow-up opportunity. If you tell them they're a jerk and they're stupid and they're a loser and they're going to end up homeless or they're going to, you know, die of some chronic disease because they're not taking your product, they're not going to let you follow up with them. So these are the simple steps of building network marketing in a way that, you know, you really only have to prospect for about a year. Not that you wouldn't continue to, but you only really need to prospect for about a year, one or two people a day, and then your best prospects in the world is that whole list of people that said no. Because what they really meant was not now, I can't deal with it right now, and if you honored them, then you're going to be in a position to follow up with them next year. And most of them will know who you are, they'll know what you're doing, they'll know what you're selling, and they're the best absolute prospects you can have. And if you'll do that, maybe they won't get in your business, but maybe they'll get in somebody's business. And instead of you know, us having to talk to 10 or 15 people to get one person to take a serious look at our business, maybe three or four or five years from now, we can actually change the landscape and the attitude of the public about our business model because we deserve it. We've earned it by honoring people. That's the Bliss Business Curiosity approach to connecting and uh, building a business and prospecting people. I uh, trust that you all got it, love it, practice it, and well, I can take a few minutes right now and see if any of you have questions. So I'm reading the chat. Three Ben Idaho. I wonder where that is. Earth Haven 4. I love everybody's email addresses. The Will Dennis, yes, please. Doug Collins. Hey, Doug. <laughs> That's not snow, actually. Somewhere back there, there's an ocean. Oh, there's the ocean. <clears throat> yeah, we're in a great spot here. We're in uh, what's called... Um, the four, we're not staying at the Four Seasons. We rented a, a beautiful home overlooking the ocean on the golf course here at the Four Seasons Resort at Manelli Bay. And we're here for five weeks uh, doing retreats. Got, got people coming over, sometimes groups, sometimes individuals. We've got a beautiful cove down here that's got fantastic snorkeling and 
Kimmy and I hike to the sunrise every morning and we go back for a big swim every evening. There's wild dolphins in the bay, whales, turtles. It's really, really an awesome place. Lanai is the uh, one of the smallest Hawaiian islands. There's only 3,000 people that live here. There's only one little town. There's no stoplights. Uh, and one of the coolest thing about it is the entire island is open to the residents to go wherever they want. Even though it is owned by Larry Ellison, Larry Ellison of Oracle Computers, he's worth like $50 billion. He bought the entire island three or four years ago, with the exception of the deeded lots that were already owned by people. Uh, but the entire island is open for the public to uh, go wherever they want. Like you can get an ATV or a golf cart or go hiking or mountain biking. You can go to any beach anywhere on the island. Uh, all the roads are open to the public. Really, really an awesome place. So I don't see any questions. Thank you all for joining my scope live from Lanai. Probably do another one next Friday morning. Have a fantastic weekend.